Good morning, children. We are continuing our social studies class. My name is Sajida. Today we are going to study a new lesson, lesson four. The name of our lesson is India location and physical features. India location and physical features. First, we will study about the location of our country in the world. Then we will study about the physical features of our country. Okay. So, you know that the name of our country is India. So, let's study first where is India located. Look here. Here we can see the earth. You know, the shape of our earth is spherical or round. If we divide the earth into two parts, it is in uh, two hemispheres. This one, northern hemisphere and here, the southern hemisphere. Okay? We say that the earth the shape of the earth is spherical or the shape of the earth is sphere. If we divide the earth into two parts, here we get a hemisphere and here we get a hemisphere. As the first part is in north is north, this is called northern hemisphere. And here, southern hemisphere. And our country India is located in the northern hemisphere. Okay. Our country India is located in the northern hemisphere. So, if we take the earth as a whole, India is located in the northern hemisphere. Now we are going to study uh, the place of India in world map. Okay, if we take the uh, map of the world, we can see the seven continents. Do you know what is a continent? Continent is a vast area of land. A vast area of land is called a continent and a continent contains several countries. Okay, a continent contains many countries. Seven continents are there and uh, our country India is located in the continent of Asia. Okay, India is located in the continent of Asia. So, first we studied that India is located in the northern hemisphere. When we take the earth as a whole, we can say that India is located in the northern hemisphere. And uh, then, regarding the continents, India exists in the continent of Asia. So many countries are there in Asia. One of them is India. India is located in the continent of Asia. Now we are going to study about the physical features of our country. You know what, what, are, what is mean by physical features? The land, uh, soil, climate etc. are called physical features. Okay, let's study what are the physical features of our country. See, when we say about the physical features, here this is the northern part, here is south, here is west and here is east. Okay, then in northern part we have the northern mountains. Then we have 
northern plains then we have a desert in our country thar desert so here northern mountains northern plains then thar desert is there here the plateau region is there then we have islands here so these are the then we have the coastal areas so these are the physical features of india that is we have mountains we have plains we have plateau land we have desert we have coastal areas then we have islands also these are the different natural features of india uh, that is we have six natural features first one the northern mountains then the plains northern plains then the plateau region then the desert then the coastal plains then the islands okay so six natural uh, features are there six physical features so great we have great mountains we have plain land we have plateau region we have desert coastal areas are there then islands are there so six natural features now we will study study it one by one okay and before that look here here you can see the bay of bengal here then here arabian sea and here indian ocean so the bay of bengal here we have water arabian sea here also exist ocean water here indian ocean is there so if we if you notice you can uh, see that the three parts one two then three three parts the three parts of our country is covered with ocean water okay sea water three parts of our country is covered with water you know if a land area is covered with water on its three sides it is called a peninsula okay if a land area is covered with water on its three sides it is called a peninsula so here on the eastern side we have arabian sea sorry on the western side we have arabian sea in the eastern side we have bay of bengal then in southern part we have indian ocean as uh, the three parts of our country is surrounded by water the southern part of india is called a peninsula okay the southern part of india is called a peninsula because the three sides are surrounded by water so here uh, in all these west western part eastern part and southern part we have uh, water and in the northern part we have the northern mountains okay in so in north northern mountains that is himalayas are there in north himalayas are there in south we have indian ocean in west we have arabian sea and in then in east we have bay of bengal so look at the map again north in the northern part our country is protected by the northern mountains or himalayas in the south uh, we have the indian ocean 
in the west we have arabian sea in the east we have bay of bengal thus we can say that our country has now on its uh, our country has a natural boundaries on its four sides okay we have natural boundary on its four sides then what is a boundary uh, a boundary is an imaginary line which separates a place from the other place or boundaries uh, we can say that boundary is an imaginary line which separates our country from other countries or our, our neighboring countries okay so the southern part of india is called a peninsula because the three sides of a country are surrounded by water then we studied that we have uh, on a, our country has natural barriers in four sides in north we have northern mountains or himalayas in south indian ocean is there in west arabian sea and in east bay of bengal is there now let's study about the neighboring countries of india our neighbors in northern part we have china nepal and bhutan china nepal and bhutan exist in northern part and in northeastern part we have bangladesh and myanmar then in eastern side we have afghanistan and pakistan and in south we have sri lanka these are our neighboring countries so in north exist china nepal and bhutan in the eastern part bangladesh and myanmar is there then in western part afghanistan and pakistan is there then in south sri lanka is there so these are our neighboring countries which are the neighboring countries of india china nepal bhutan bangladesh myanmar sri lanka afghanistan and pakistan these are the neighboring countries of india now let's study the physical features of india one by one first we will study about the northern mountains so i told you that the physical features of india has been divided into six first part the northern mountains then the northern plains then the thar desert then the peninsular plateau then the coastal plains and then the islands these are the six physical divisions of india now let's uh, see the places where it is located the northern mountains exist here then the northern plains after the northern mountains we can see the northern plains then the thar desert is here then the peninsula plateau exist here then we have the coastal plains on both sides then here exist the islands two group we have two groups of islands so these are the different physical features of our country we, the physical features of india has been divided into um six okay six parts first one northern mountains second one northern plains third one thar desert fourth one peninsular plateau then fifth one coastal plains sixth one islands so let's revise what we studied 
India is the seventh largest country in the world. Okay, and so first I told you that India is located in the continent of Asia. India is located in the continent of India is located in the continent of Asia. What is a uh, continent? A continent is a vast stretch of land which contains a number of countries. And there are lots of countries in the world. Uh, when we uh, consider the size, India is the seventh largest country in the world. So which is the seventh largest country in the world? India is the seventh largest country in the world. And India is located in the continent of Asia. Then India can be divided into six natural regions. They are first one, the northern mountains. Second one, the northern plains. Then the great Indian desert, the Deccan Plateau, the coastal plains and the islands. Okay. So which is the la seventh largest country in the world? It is India. India is located in which continent? India is located in the continent of Asia. Then, how many natural regions are there in India? Six. They are the northern plains, the, sorry, the northern mountains, the northern plains, the great Indian desert, the Deccan Plateau, the coastal plains and the islands. Now we are going to study about the northern mountains. Here exists the northern mountains. The northern mountains or the Himalayas. The northern mountains exist in the extreme northern part of India. That is why these are called the northern mountains. Okay. The northern mountains or Himalayas exist in the northern part of our country. And this northern mountains or Himalayas separates India from our neighboring country that is China. Okay. The northern mountains exist or it acts as a natural barrier and it separates India from China. So here is China, here the northern mountains are there. The northern mountain separates India from our neighboring country China. Then the northern mountains are called Himalayas. The word Himalaya means the home of snow. The Himalayas are very big mountains. It has tall peaks and it is fully covered with snow. Okay. The Himalayas are very big mountains. It has tall peaks and the highest peak in the world is located in the Himalayas. The highest peak in the world is Mount Everest. So the Mount Everest is located in our Himalayas or, the, or in the northern mountains. Then this uh, great Himalayas, it does stretch to 2500 kilometer. Start, it, uh, in India, it uh, starts from northwest and it ends in northeast. And it has been divided into three ranges or three parts. First one, Himadri. 
Next one, Himachal. Then the third one, Shivalik. Okay. Then Himalayas has been divided into three ranges. First one, Himadri. Second one, Himachal. Third one, Shivalik. And it acts as a natural barrier. It separates our country from China. And also it prevents the cold wind from entering into our country. It acts as a barrier. What is mean by barrier? Barrier is something like a wall uh, which prevents something. Okay. So the Himalayas acts as a natural barrier and it prevents the cold winds from entering, uh, cold winds from the northern part from entering our country. So the Himalayas are very big mountains. It contains tall peaks. Um, it's fully covered with snow throughout the year. Many rivers start from the Himalayas. And Mount Everest is located in the Himalayas. So let's revise it again. Which is the highest peak in the world? Mount Everest is the highest peak in the world. The Himalayas have been have three main ranges, namely the Himadri, the Himachal, and the Shivali. These are the three main ranges of Himalayas. Which are the three main ranges of Himalayas? Himadri, Himachal and Shivali. The word Himalaya means the home of snow. The word Himalaya means the home of snow. Next we are going to study about the Northern Fertile Plain. See, here exists the Northern Fertile Plain, the second natural uh, feature of India. See, here exists the Himalayas and the Northern uh, Plains. The Northern Plains exist in the south of the Himalayas. Okay. The rivers which starts from the Himalayas flows through the northern plains. Now, what is a plain? Plain is a flat, fertile land. Plain is a flat, fertile land. As this uh, northern plain is very fertile, a large variety of crops grows in the northern fertile plains. Okay. So, the northern plains exist in the south of the Himalayas and uh, the soil of the northern plains is very fertile and a large variety of crops grows in northern fertile plains. And uh, uh, the rivers, yeah, the Yamuna, Ganga, then uh, Brahmaputra, then Indus, all these rivers flows through this, uh, flow, which starts from the Himalayas, it uh, gives water to the northern plains. The rivers which flow, uh, which uh, uh, flows through the northern plains are the Yamuna, Ganga and the Indus. So, it is also called Indo-Gangetic Plain. You know why the northern plains are called Indo-Gangetic Plain? Because uh, the river Indus, the river Indus and uh, Ganga River flows through the northern plain. So, it is also called Indo-Gangetic Plains. It is the reverse from the Himalayas which makes the 
northern plains fertile so the rivers are yamuna indus and ganga are the main rivers which flow through the northern plains and it makes the plain la, plain land fertile the northern plains are also called indo gangetic plain because the rivers indus and ganga flows through the northern plains so here you can see the river ganga from the himalayas we studied that uh, the northern plains exist in the south of the himalayas like this river ganga yamuna and indus also flows through the plains here you can see that the river ganga it starts from the himalayan mountains now let's uh, devise the points again plains are flat and fertile lands what are called plains plains are flat and fertile lands the northern plains lie to the south of the himalayas they are well watered by the perennial rivers such as the ganga the yamuna and the brahmaputra then the northern plains are also called as indo gangetic plains here look at the third point they are well that is the northern plains are well watered by the perennial rivers such as the indus ganga yamuna and the brahmaputra what is mean by the word perennial rivers perennial perennial rivers or are the rivers which uh, has water throughout the year so uh, these rivers has water throughout the year because these rivers starts from the himalayas and as the himalayas are covered with snow throughout the year these rivers gets water in the whole year so these are called perennial rivers as these uh, uh, rivers passes through the northern plains the the water is always available in the plain land now we are going to study about the desert do you know what is a desert a desert is a vast stretch of land which is covered with a uh, rock or sand so first we studied about the northern mountains the northern mountains are also called himalayas himalayas are covered with snow then we studied about the northern fertile plain so uh, the plain land the land which are flat and fertile are called plains first we studied about the northern mountains from that we can understand that we have a uh, long chain of mountains in northern part of india and also i told that these mountains are very big and tall the highest peak in the world mount everest exists in northern mountains okay so we learned that in extreme northern part of india a large group of mountains exist there and they are called northern mountains or himalayas then i told you about so first one was about the mountains next i told you about the northern plains so we have understood that there is exist a group of mountains in india and also we have a plain land we have flat land now we are going to study about the desert that is in our country there exist desert also the name of our desert is called the name of the desert which exist in india is called thar desert okay then what is a desert desert is a stretch of land which is covered with sand or rocks so i told you that in our country that here we have 
a large group of mountains in north then we have plain land again i told there exist desert in our country and this desert is located in the state of rajasthan that is the name of our desert is called tar desert or the great indian desert the desert is located in the north western part of our country it exists in the state of rajasthan so what is the name of the desert in our country it is called tar desert it exists in which state the tar desert is located in the state of rajasthan then you know that uh, in desert it receives no rainfall okay or uh, um, it, uh, sometimes it gets very little rainfall or uh, it receives no rainfall at all so only very few plants grows in a desert then in rajasthan there um, exist one river the name of the river is luni so the only river which exists in rajasthan is luni so we studied that in india there exist a desert also what is the name of that desert it's called tar desert it is located in the state of rajasthan then what is a desert desert is a vast stretch of land which is covered with sand or rocks and uh, in desert there will not be rainfall or uh, it gets rainfall very uh, rarely so very few plants grows in a desert then in tar desert one only one river exists there it is called luni so in this lesson we studied that india is located in the continent of asia when we take the earth as a whole it exists in the northern hemisphere then we studied that here in india we have six natural features among that in this class we studied about three first one was the northern mountains it exists in the extreme north of india it is called northern mountains or the himalayas second we studied about the northern plains then we studied about the great indian desert so you should understand that in our country there exist very big tall mountains in the northern part and uh, it has Uh, highest peaks it's covered with snow the mount everest exists in northern mountains then in south of the uh, northern mountains we have the northern plains so we have highest mountains in our country big and tall mountains exist in our country then we have a vast stretch of plain land and we have desert also in our country so we studied about the mountains the plain land and the desert next class we will study about the another three natural features in india so till then thank you